the question, is Yellowstone gonna blow? Supervolcano generates the biggest explosive eruptions that we've ever seen. Yellowstone, if it erupts in a maximum eruption, it can literally tear the guts out of the United States of America. Volcanoes are not just a sight to behold. They can pose significant threats to human lives. Among them, the Yellowstone volcano stands out as one of the most dangerous. Recently, officials have observed a staggering 329% increase in activity within the volcano system. What could be driving this surge? And what might be the consequences if the Yellowstone supervolcano were to erupt? Join us as we explore the implications of this alarming rise in activity and its potential impact and hazards on the world. Joe Rogan reveals shocking truth about Yellowstone Volcano. Joe Rogan, a popular American comedian and podcaster, revealed a shocking truth about the Yellowstone Volcano in a recent episode of his podcast, The Joe Rogan Experience. The podcast shed more light on the impact of the volcano and why people should be worried. Let's talk a bit about how Yellowstone came to be. The Yellowstone supervolcano is a volcanic caldera in Yellowstone National Park, located in the northwest corner of Wyoming, United States. It is one of the most popular tourist attractions in the state. People come from far and wide, without a care in the world, to visit Yellowstone. But would they still visit the park if they understood the stakes? As beautiful and mysterious as the Yellowstone volcano can be from afar, it is very destructive. Being one of the biggest volcanic systems, Yellowstone sits as one of the planet's hottest spots. But how did the caldera form? The caldera, resembling a crater, was formed from three eruptions across 2.1 million years. The Huckleberry Ridge eruption was 2.1 million years ago, the Mesa Falls eruption was 1.3 million years ago, and the Lava Creek eruption was approximately 640,000 years ago. The Yellowstone supervolcano also allegedly produced a smaller eruption, creating the west thumb of Yellowstone Lake 174,000 years ago. This means that tens of generations have come and gone after the last eruption. Could there be another eruption around the corner? In Joe Rogan's podcast back in March, he touched on the topic with his guest. He concluded that as much as people do not know these things or take them seriously, another Yellowstone volcanic eruption would be devastating. According to Joe, humans are one of the most vulnerable species on Earth especially to disasters and apocalyptic experiences. Maybe there are things we can handle or prevent due to our advanced technology. But can we handle a supervolcano? Joe Rogan says no. According to him, humans are not yet prepared for the impact of a supervolcano. It can wipe out the human species and affect our environment. The Earth already has disturbing threats to its existence most of which are caused by man-made activities. An example is the rapid degradation of the environment due to industrialization. Another is the ever-existing threat of a nuclear war. What happens when a supervolcano is added to the list? Do we even have a chance? The horrifying effects of a supervolcano. Ever wonder why the technological guru Elon Musk keeps building and building advanced technology Looking for a way to make Mars habitable? Well, maybe he knows about the Yellowstone volcano. You may be feeling nonchalant about the volcanic wake-up call from Joe because he is a comedian. So you assume that he is just trying to make us scared, or maybe he is trying to pull a prank. But what if there is something that we should be worried about? Even scientists and archaeologists seem to be on the same page when it comes to the leveling danger of a supervolcano. The question is, how can the effect of a supervolcano be on our planet? Volcanic eruptions range in magnitude from steady lava flows to massive explosions with superheated, umbrella-shaped plumes of ash, rocks, and gas, but only a few can be called supervolcanoes. This can be determined by the measurement of their potential explosion using a volcanic explosivity index. A supervolcano such as Yellowstone can produce a magnitude 8 eruption on the Volcanic Explosivity Index, discharging more than 1,000 cubic kilometers of material. 
Before a supervolcano goes off, magma collects in a chamber or hotspot below the surface, and pressure builds until the magma eventually breaks through the Earth's surface. When a supervolcano erupts, every magma in the hotspot is emptied because the ground becomes less supported. Although these kinds of eruptions are rare, scientists have speculated that the larger the eruption, the less it is likely to occur. So if anything is brewing under the Yellowstone, how big is it? No one alive has witnessed a supervolcano. The most recent supereruption was of New Zealand's Taupo volcano, which occurred around 26,500 years ago. But with the impact of smaller volcanoes that have occurred more recently, we can paint the picture of what a supervolcano should be like. Back in August 2020, Neil deGrasse Tyson, one of the most popular physicists in the world, invited a volcanologist named Janine Krippner on his Star Talk show. She described what the supervolcano should look like. A volcano that has at some point in the past produced the largest style of eruption. You're looking at a volume of magma erupting that's around a thousand cubic kilometers. So it's cubic, a lot of rock coming out of the cubic ground. Cubic kilometers. According to Janine, imagine a thousand six miles cubes erupting from the ground. That's how bad a supervolcano could get. The third Yellowstone caldera formed about 640,000 years ago, sits at the lower half of the park, and measures about 45 miles per 30 miles in diameter. That was the impact on the ground. But the size of a supervolcano is not the only concern. What about the dangerous materials a super eruption releases into the environment? What happens when the hot avalanches of volcanic ash pumice, gases, and rocks that can reach about 400 to 500 degrees Celsius, move at more than 300 kilometers per hour, and travel for more than 100 kilometers. If Yellowstone ever experiences another eruption, the size of the larva coming out of the volcano would be the last thing to worry about. Why is that? According to scientists who have studied Yellowstone for decades, there are most likely not many larvae in the caldera. This is because the brewing magma under Yellowstone would most likely come out as tiny, ashy particles, gas, and hot rocks that would travel at an unbelievable speed, destroying everything in its path. Scientists say that it would be a pyroclastic eruption, extremely bigger than the eruption of Martinique's Mount Pele in 1902. The Mount Pele eruption was a magnitude 4 pyroclastic, but it was not a supervolcano. It hit in the early hours of the 8th of May, killing all 28,000 residents. According to scientists, if Yellowstone erupts, everybody in the United States could be dead, probably Canada too. It's possible that the surrounding 800 kilometers beyond the reach of the pyroclastic flows would be covered in a thick blanket of ash. Why? When a volcano erupts, they shoot gases mainly water vapor, carbon dioxide, and sulfur dioxide, into Earth's stratosphere. Everybody around breathes in toxic air. This air can form cement-like structures when they get into the lungs, and they would eventually choke. Buildings would also be covered in ash, and the heat would most likely affect the power grid and cable lines. The impact on the environment is on another level. When the eruption releases sulfur, it reacts with water vapor to create sulfate aerosols. These increase the reflection of radiation from the sun back into space and can soak up terrestrial radiation. We are already dealing with the impact of radiation on climate change through our advanced technology, so there's no telling about the impact of more reflection radiation around the world. It would cause a massive drop in temperature. Some sources say that the impact of a Yellowstone eruption can lead to a 10 degree Celsius drop in ocean temperature, and the temperature effect could last up to a decade. It's estimated that three megatons of sulfur were released into the atmosphere during the 1991 eruption of Mount Pinatubo, and the global temperature dropped by 0.5 degrees Celsius. Now imagine the world without the rays of the sun for 10 years. There's nothing hotter than the sun, so how would humans survive? If there's no sun, how do plants carry out photosynthesis? There would be a great famine on Earth and an untimely demise of the ecosystem of many animals. Scientists say that a certain supervolcano, known as the Young Toba Tuf, 
that erupted 74,000 years ago was so great that it allegedly sent the world into a decade-long volcanic winter and caused the climate to be cold and dry for thousands of years after that. Although the United States of America, Canada, Mexico, and the United Kingdom may be the most affected, the global community would bear the long-term consequences of the eruption. The world would change drastically, and so would the lives of the people in it. Now let's compare the Yellowstone volcano with other volcanic eruptions that have occurred in the past. The eruption that brought drought on tropical rainforest. The youngest Toba eruption, also known as the Toba super eruption, occurred around 74,000 years ago at the site of present-day Lake Toba in Sumatra, Indonesia. It was so catastrophic that it caused a brutal global volcanic winter of 6 to 10 years and contributed to a 1-000 year-long cooling episode. It had a volcanic explosive index of 8. Geologist Michael R. Rampino of New York University and volcanologist Stephen Self of the University of Hawaii at Manoa said the event led to a genetic bottleneck of humans. Millions of people died, leaving only a few thousand to build back the Earth's population. It was worse than a full-blown war. The youngest Toba eruption was the last and largest of four eruptions of the Toba Caldera complex during the Quaternary period. It was a result of high-precision argon-argon dating. The explosion was so severe that the volume of ashfall was estimated to be at least two 800-kilometer cube dense rock equivalent. It was the largest explosive volcanic eruption known in the Quaternary period. The explosion finished within 14 days, leaving a blanket of thick volcanic ash over the Indian subcontinent, the Indian Ocean, and the Arabian Sea. Due to the harsh climate, scientists theorized that the aftermath of the Toba explosion led to the deaths of many humans. According to the genetic bottleneck theory, between 50,000 and 100,000 years ago, human populations rapidly decreased to 3,000 and 10,000 surviving individuals. The theory also suggested that the Toba eruption destroyed vegetation and brought severe drought in the tropical rainforest belt. The world houses billions of people now. A lot could die if anything like this happens again. How many explosions do we need to experience before we take the bull by the horn? Hopefully, we don't have a repeat of the largest supervolcano in history the biggest supervolcano in history. The Flat Landing Brook Formation is said to be the biggest supervolcano explosion in history, and it occurred in Gloucester County of northern New Brunswick, Canada. According to speculative records, the eruption consisted mostly of volcanic rocks that were deposited 466 to 465 million years ago. Although there is no detailed information, it was theoretically compared to the Yellowstone volcano. The explosion covered at least 2,000 to 20,000 kilometers, and after the explosion, some allegedly took 2 million years to settle. The common denominator of every volcano remains the thick ash blanket, just like the Wawa Spring Caldera, the volcano that blocked out the sun. The Wawa Springs. Caldera is a supervolcano said to have occurred about 30 million years ago in western Utah. Lead author and BYU geology professor Eric Christensen said that the explosion released about 5,500 cubic kilometers of magma. Can you imagine that? Speaking on the eruption and collapse of the volcano, study author and BYU geology professor Emeritus Myron Best said, the sky would have been darkened for days, perhaps weeks, because the ash so much ash in the atmosphere would have completely blocked out the sun, just penetrating darkness. Then eventually, when all of the ash cleared out of the atmosphere, you would see this vast landscape of steaming hot volcanic ash. The supervolcano leveled about 12,000 square miles in western Utah and eastern Nevada. According to a 30-year-long research of data and samples collected, the collapse of the cap preventing the magma from shooting larvae might have caused numerous earthquakes across the country and beyond. And there would have been a roar, a hiss, and a rumble. 
It would seem like the rapture was taking place. But how do you prepare? How to prepare for the big disaster? Back in June 1991, Mount Pinatubo in the Philippines erupted, making it the second largest volcano in the 20th century. The ground gave way after an earthquake in the area occurred and only larva could come out. The eruption was so severe that a thick black smoke rising about 30 kilometers high could be seen covering the atmosphere and releasing sulfur into the environment. In 22 days, the combination of sulfur and air circulated the world. Weather reports recorded that the thick black smoke blocked the rays of the sun from reaching the earth, deflecting reflection radiation, and the temperature dropped an average of 0.5 degrees Celsius. Ash deposits about two inches thick cover the lands around the area. The mountain's eruption released about 10 billion tons of molten magma into the environment. The eruption removed so much rock from the ground that the area formed a caldera that measures 2.5 kilometers in diameter. If Mount Pinatubo, only 2.5 kilometers in diameter, could cause so much damage and affect climate change around the world, how much more than a 45 kilometer diameter? Even after more than five years, hazardous effects from June 15, 1991 continued. Fortunately, scientists from the Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology and the U.S. The Geological Survey had forecast Pinatubo's 1991 climactic eruption, resulting in the saving of at least 5,000 lives and at least $250 million in property. Most people had left the area before the eruption. Commercial jets flying over or towards the area lost about $10 million in damages. About 20,000 indigenous Ada Highlanders lost their homes to landslides and earthquakes. What do you do when you have nowhere to go? Eruption that stopped sun's particles from reaching the earth. The Tambora eruption occurred in 1815 in Tabora village in Indonesia. It was said to be one of the worst explosions in history at that time, sitting pretty at the top of the volcanic explosivity index. When the magma erupts, particles including ash, rock particles, and gases as hot as 700 degrees Celsius creep into the environment at high speed. The magma tumbled into the sea for three hours, and the explosion covered about 12 miles on each side. Anybody around the area was instantly killed, alongside plants and animals. The explosion was so great that it wiped out the entire village of Tabora recording about 10,000 deaths in total. The eruption also released 60 megatons of sulfur into the environment to mix with the air, covered the sky, blocking the sun's rays and stopping them from visiting the earth. After the explosion, Tabara was desolate. The global temperature change had been reduced by 5.5 degrees Fahrenheit. The scientists said that the impact of the explosion could turn a sunny day into a cold freezing in a matter of hours. Things were so bad that no summer was recorded in the following year. Imagine a whole year, three 65 days without the sun. What? The Tabora explosion could be a perfect fit for the Yellowstone stone volcano. The latter is only bigger and may cause more destruction if any eruption occurs. Could the Yellowstone volcano blow up soon? Nobody knows. Is the Yellowstone volcano about to erupt? The Yellowstone caldera still carries out different activities. It is still erupting with small earthquakes, geothermal heat, and geysers sporadically. Each year, Yellowstone erupts thousands of earthquakes, showing the movement of magma beneath the surface. But shouldn't we be worried? It was an earthquake that triggered the 1991 eruption in the Philippines. Has the Earth given us a warning to prepare for an incoming volcano? Magma may lie just three to eight miles beneath two resurgent domes inside the Yellowstone caldera today, the Sour Creek Dome and the Mallard Lake Dome. However, some scientists have maintained that since Yellowstone already had three eruptions, it may not see a fourth. The scientist in charge of the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory in California, Jacob Lowenstern, said that a supervolcano coming from Yellowstone in the future was not a sure thing. According to him, the area around Yellowstone 
has been burping for 140 years, and it has lived a good life and may not see another eruption. But the constant seismic activities preaches otherwise. Most of the earthquakes around Yellowstone are of such low magnitude that humans cannot feel them. They can only be detected by a piece of seismological monitoring equipment. More than 48,000 earthquakes have been recorded in the Yellowstone region since 1973, but over 99% were magnitude 2 or lower and were not felt by anyone. Out of the remaining 1%, the 7.3 magnitude Hebgen Lake earthquake in 1959 killed 28 people and triggered a major landslide in Madison Canyon. It also destroyed the volcanic structure of Yellowstone but did not trigger any eruption. Nobody knows why. Maybe the magma was still brewing. Another magnitude 6.0 earthquake was recorded in 1975. Two earthquakes in the magnitude 5 range, 29 earthquakes in the magnitude 4 range, and 379 in the magnitude 3 range. In June 2023, the University of Utah seismograph stations reported 78 earthquakes in the Yellowstone National Park region, the largest being a minor 2.8 magnitude earthquake located about 17 miles north-northeast of Moran, Wyoming. In a bid to understand what to expect should any eruption ever come out of Yellowstone again, many scientists have decided to study its structure. The Inner Workings of the Yellowstone a new study has revealed the mysterious structure of the Yellowstone caldera. It also talks about how the magma rises from deep into the earth and creates two large chambers of partially melted rock beneath the surface of the national park. According to the study, these two chambers are separated by a layer of non-mentef rock, also known as a sill. The magma coming from the lower chamber deep in the earth flows easily and does not hold much gas. But the upper magma chamber, with thick, sticky magma, holds a great deal of explosive gas. It's just like the fundamentals of fire safety. However, here is the interesting thing. The eruption of the Yellowstone takes the theory of a can filled with soda. When you buy a can of soda from the market, you most definitely do not want to shake it, because you might end up drinking only a small quantity. If you shake it, you can always open it to your detriment. Do you boo? The Yellowstone structure is like a can of shaken soda with a fat wall of protection. The thicker the wall, the more concentrated the flow of the magma in the upper chamber is. It moved around in a zigzag manner, desperately waiting to be unleashed. According to Ilya Bindaman, a University of Oregon geochemist and co-author of the new study, Yellowstone may be approaching the end of its evolution because so much of the material in the upper magma chamber is recycled and remelted after previous eruptions. Does this mean the gases in the upper magma chamber are reducing? Would this affect the performance of the overall eruption should Yellowstone ever explode? Michael Poland, scientist in charge at the US, the Geological Survey's Yellowstone Volcano Observatory, has suggested that the Yellowstone volcano might not be super after all as even the caldera would get tired of the reoccurrence. How many times do you want to reheat your leftovers? At some point you're going to say, I'm not going to reheat this. You've microwaved it six times, and it's no longer food, he said. So if Yellowstone ever erupted, maybe it would only take out neighboring cities or little towns around the Yellowstone region. The Yellowstone supervolcano may seem like a big deal because it is, but it is not the only volcano in the United States. What happens if others erupt and Americans are not prepared? The possibility of the Long Valley Caldera erupting. The United States Geological Survey has been keeping an eye on the Long Valley Caldera in California, near the popular ski resort of Mammoth Mountain, just east of Yosemite National Park. The last time the Long Valley Caldera erupted was about 700,000 years ago. Although a supervolcano is not likely to occur there, a small one can disrupt activities in the state and worsen climate change. It can also be deadly. So, it is important for citizens to always keep an eye out and prepare. Margaret Mangan, scientist in charge at the USGS California Volcano Observatory, 
said there are seven volcanic regions in California with zones of molten rock beneath the surface. According to her, a volcanic eruption in California is roughly as likely as a magnitude six or greater earthquake on the San Andreas Fault. Manga said she has tried to raise awareness about the impact of a volcanic eruption on multiple occasions, but Californians don't worry about volcanoes. They worry about earthquakes, tsunamis, and wildfires. It is obvious that they shift things aside, deadly or not, once there is no mystery or legend attached. The awareness level and preparedness level is quite low in this state, Manga said. We prepare for those large earthquake events, and we need to prepare for volcanic eruptions. Speaking of disasters that could level the face of the Earth, asteroids are not talked about enough. How can the world brave for a potential asteroid impact? Is there a way to stop it from hitting the Earth? Do we also have to worry about asteroids? Everyone should be worried about a potential asteroid impact on the Earth. Popular American podcaster Joe Rogan recently invited solo comedian Brian Kalin to an episode of his podcast where they talked about the dangerous impact of a potential asteroid hitting the planet. Joe explained to Brian how an asteroid can wipe out civilization almost instantaneously. He told the solo comedian about an asteroid that came close to Earth, wheeling a ridiculous amount of force. According to him, a spinning meteor about 10 times the force of an atomic bomb exploded in the air. Imagine an explosion 10 times that of Hiroshima. Would the world be void of the human race? Little asteroids have hit the Earth on rare occasions, and those parts of the planet have felt their impact. But Rogan is worried about that one asteroid that can wipe the face of the Earth. In another episode of his podcast, he invited Graham Hancock, a British investigative journalist and author, and they talked about the possibility of an asteroid hitting the world and destroying everything in it. According to Hancock, there are ways to prevent the possibility of an asteroid hitting the world, and there are also ways to subdue its impact should it hit the Earth. Graham pointed out the ever-growing possibilities in the world of technology and how the human race has broken ground on all fronts. If we can explore space and plant detecting satellites in the cosmos, why should we not do something about the asteroids? With cosmic technology, global authorities can find these asteroids and lead them away from potential collision with the Earth. The Earth has survived many asteroid hits, but Joe Rogan says we are just lucky that we get the ones with a little less impact. We may not be so lucky when the super ones collide with the Earth. Neil deGrasse also talked about the impact of asteroids that are just passing the Earth in the cosmos. According to Neil, they can have a devastating effect. But DeGrasse has also suggested that global authorities build a defense system to help prevent cosmic dancers from hitting the Earth. According to him, it would go a long way in preserving the human species. DeGrasse also pointed out that although cosmic experts understand the possibility and the impact of an asteroid hitting the Earth, they have failed to come up with a possible preventive or defense measure. If a massive asteroid or comet were to be heading for the Earth with 100% certainty, the best thing that the experts would be able to do at that moment is to tell everyone when the asteroid would hit and what parts would be affected, he said. Till now, the global authorities and cosmic authorities have not been able to come up with a good defense mechanism for destructive possibilities. So if anything were to happen now, we would be pretty much on our own. This is why we need to act as one unit and raise awareness concerning potentially devastating events. We can spur the authorities back to work. Thank you for watching. Scroll down if you want to see similar videos. Don't forget to like and subscribe.